Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 212 of Weekly Poker Hand. And today we're going to be going over a hand from a $1,000 buy-in sit-and-go that takes place at Stone's Gambling Hall about once a month. Currently, blinds are 800, 1600. And I believe both players involved in this hand have about 100,000 chips, so about 75 big blinds. Under the gun plus two, RG3 raises to 4,000 with jack 10 of diamonds. And Anthony in the big blind decides to call with 6-3 of clubs. Now, 6-3 clubs is not a great hand, but I think having to put in only 2,400 into a pot that's going to be 10,600 due to the antes is probably a fine enough play. So they see the flop heads up. Flop comes jack 10-5, giving Anthony top pair with a backdoor flush draw. I'm sorry, not Anthony. Giving RG3, the preflop raiser, top pair with a backdoor flush draw. And Anthony, a bad gut shot. So, Anthony checks. RG3 bets with his top pair. And back around to Anthony, this is a spot where with a bad gut shot, I think it's fine to just fold. But, if you think your opponent's going to continuation bet this type of flop, this very dry flop too often, I think it's fine to check raise lots and lots of marginal draws. This is a spot where your opponent probably doesn't have a ton, and most people fold out stuff like ace-king when they bet and get check-raised on this flop. So if you are going to continue, I like a check-raise to about 14,000, maybe even 12,000 or 11,000, depending on your opponent. That's going to put them in a very, very bad spot, and they're going to have a difficult time continuing. If you're going to check-raise, though, I would probably be a little bit more patient and wait for 6-3 of spades, hearts, or diamonds, which are the suits on the board. With 6-3 of clubs, no backdoor flush draw, you're just not going to have very many good um, cards that you can continue barreling on. Usually you want to continue barreling when you pick up equity, and it is fine to check raise the flop and then give up with some draws, because otherwise you're probably bluffing too much. Um, anyway, Anthony decides to call, which is probably okay it may sound a little bit optimistic to say calling is okay here, but you have to understand, when your opponent bets third pot, you need to defend something like 70% of the time. If you're folding, if you're not, not calling 70% of the time, you're letting your opponent run you over. Now, that's fine when your opponent has a significant range advantage, and that probably is the case here, given RG3 open from under the gun plus two. He should have a good range, right? Um, so you can fold a little bit more than the minimum defense frequency, which is a topic that was discussed in a book a while ago, and um, people took it well out of, out of proportion and decided to start calling every single time because they really didn't want to get exploited by continuation bats. But it is fine to fold, called overfolding. It's fine to overfold in spots like this, fold more than the minimum defense frequency, because you're against a strong range. On dry boards, people with strong ranges just win, and that's okay. Anyway, Anthony decides to defend, turns a 10 of spades, and now... Anthony is going to get creative with his 6-3 of clubs and decide to lead. Now, when deciding to lead, you typically want to pick cards that change the board significantly to where whatever your opponent was value betting on the flop gets a lot worse. Now, if RG3, who raised under gun plus 2, is value betting on the flop, that's going to be with top pair and over pairs. So how does a 10 change that? Well, the answer is it doesn't really. So this is a spot where now I really don't like the lead because if RG3 does happen to have ace, king, or king, queen, or ace, queen, those just turned a gut shot to go with over cards, which is a good enough hand. Um, a jacks are all still good. If he happened to have some random hand like ace, 10 that was bluffing slash just betting 100% of his range, then that just turned a pair that's not going to fold. So I really don't like this lead. This is not a good card to lead on. And really, on jack 5 too, there are no good cards to lead on. If you had to pick some cards, I guess I'd pick a six or an ace, I guess. Not really loving an ace either. Just because you would have to assume RG3 would bet with a lot of his aces on the flop. Um, as you can see, I'm having a hard time coming up with good cards that you would like to lead on. And notice here, a six actually gives Anthony a pair, which is often good. So that's also not a good reason to bet because you have a very solid marginal made hand, which you would want to check. So I do not like this lead at all. If he is going to lead, he wants to lead big. The pot was about 18,000 or um, 19,000, and he led for nine. So he's giving his opponent, uh, he has to put in 9,000 to win a pot that's going to be 37. So he's getting great pot odds here. 
needs to realize about 25% equity. And with ace king or ace queen or king queen or a jack or a 10, you are. Now, maybe you get him to fold out nines, eights, sevens, and sixes. I guess that's an okay result. Um, maybe you get him to fold out nine, seven suited or something like that. But again, we're kind of stretching to find hands he's going to fold. So this is a spot where if Anthony does decide to lead, he must bluff the river and he probably needs to bluff pretty big. So he does lead 9,000. And now, um, worth mentioning, RG3 turn two pair. When you turn two pair here, you definitely want to ask yourself, what does my opponent's range look like? Is he leading with mostly draws? Is he leading with mostly premium made hands? Uh, is he leading with just random top pairs where he doesn't know what to do? It's tough to say. <sighs> Typically in this spot, I just call because if my opponent is bluffing, I want to give him every opportunity to continue bluffing. And if he does happen to have me beat with something like pocket tens for a random set of tens or a set of twos that decided to check call the flop and then lead the turn, I want to lose the minimum. And this is a sit and go, remember, this is a tournament setting. So this is a fine time to play it a little bit slowly and call, looking to call any river. So he does decide to call, which I think is good. That's going to induce bluffs and save him money when he happens to be beat. And then the river's a six of spades, which is a horrible card because four, three gets there. Remember, board was jack, five, two, ten. And um, not sure if I mentioned this, but the turn was a ten of spades, putting up a backdoor flush draw. And then the river is a six of spades, completing the flush. So this is a horrible, horrible river for jack, ten of diamonds. Despite that, Pretty much no matter what Anthony does, this Jack-10 has to call. Anthony River to pair, he has to decide if he should check this, and I actually think he should because a Jack is never going to fold. A 10 may or may not fold. Obviously, over pairs are not going to fold. Um, and you beat Ace-King, Ace-Queen, and King-Queen, which are very likely hands for the early position raiser to have. So while this 6 may not appear like it has a lot of showdown value, I actually think it does in this spot. And for that reason, I would check it. Looking to check, but then fold if your opponent bets. Now, it may seem a little bit silly to check and then fold, but I think a lot of people are not betting in this spot with ace-king or ace-queen as a bluff. Maybe they bluff with king-queen, which is always unfortunate, but they're also going to be betting with their jacks a lot of the time. Um, and they're obviously going to bet with their two pairs and whatnot. So I think it's fine to check this 6-3, looking to check fold it. It's actually really hard for me to come up with good strategies for people to take this particular line from the big blind because I'm virtually never making this play in the spot. So I've not thought it through. It's very important to think through these spots that you find yourself in frequently ahead of time so that you have a clear idea of how to proceed when they take place. And that's exactly what I do over at pokercoaching.com. We have monthly homework questions where I present a situation that I know comes up somewhat frequently and I force you to think about your range and give me an answer for how you would play it on the flop and on a random turn card and then on a random river card so that you are prepared to approach these situations in game. And like right here, I'm just lost. I don't know if you need to be bluffing the 6-3. I'm guessing though, you probably don't if your opponent's range contains ace-king, ace-queen, and king-queen. So I would check. He does decide to continue the bluff though. If he didn't river a pair, by the way, he definitely needs to bet. This is very, very clear bluffing hand, I think. There really are no cards you're trying to block. You really just don't want to have an ace or a king or a queen in your hand because that makes it harder for your opponent to have ace, king, ace, queen, or king, queen. Anyway, he bets. I don't even know how much it was. He got instantly called. He bet 13,500. I think that's probably a little bit small. I believe the pot was about 30,000. I would have bet much bigger in this spot, something like 24,000 to really try to get the opponents to fold out one pair hands. Uh, when you bet 13,500, you're just going to get called every time. And RG3 makes the good snap call and wins a very, very nice pot. So I'm all for bluffing and I'm all for creative lines, but you just want to make sure you're doing it in good spots. And here, the board did not change nearly enough to where you're going to make your opponent fold a lot of their flop betting range. It's very important to think about that when you are determining whether or not you should make the play. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I want to thank you all for being here today. Thanks to Stone's Gambling Hall for letting me use their footage. They have a lot of great footage there, by the way. You can check them out at Stone's Poker Live, I think is what it is, on YouTube. And um, yeah, this has been fun. Good luck in your games. Enjoy yourselves. Be nice to someone. And I'll talk to you next week.